Good morning, everyone. Hello, welcome to my craft craft room. Glenda Mollett here, and we are stamping in my craft room this morning, and we're going to use the Painted Poppies um, bundle of products on our card today. Now, I cased this card from my friend and fellow demonstrator, Wendy Lee, and I added a few things to make it my own, but it's basically her card. So this one, the poppies are painted in Poppy Parade, but we're going to do a different color today. So I also did a couple of sample um, colors, uh, what color you can do the, the poppies. They don't have to be red. This is Purple Posy and this one is Mango Melody. And I've left, done a couple of different highlighting techniques on these. This one, there's no highlighting. There's blending, but there's no highlighting. This one, there's highlighting, if you can see right on the, like the curvature of the petals there. And that's done by um, leaving that white on the first go around and then putting the dark on and then going back over with the light and doing it over top. So there's only one layer of color in the highlighted areas. This one, I also did some highlighting, but it's a little bit different because I didn't color these in. They're still white and the white shows through. At the end of the month, I'm doing a, during my Friday drop-in, we're going to play, play. We're going to color with Stampin' Blends and I'm going to hopefully be able to show the people who come to my studio a couple of different techniques. But it's basically just getting time with the blends in your hand. Not everybody likes coloring and I like the Stampin' Blends because you don't have to shade with them. <coughs> Excuse me, you can just use them um, just as they are. I've done this a lot on my Facebook Lives using these markers. So today we're going to make our, um, our poppies will be lovely lipstick. So I have the light in the dark and then I have the light mossy meadow just for the, the the stem and the or the fl the leaves on the inside an envelope. This one I didn't color, and this one I just colored part of it. So we'll color the whole thing today, so you can see what the difference is. Now this card, the whole front panel is popped up, and I used um, the foam strips. They're a little bit thicker than our dimensionals. So you can see the difference. Let me get a strip out. They're a little bit thicker and um, for for when you want to pop up an entire panel, they work really well because they're long, thin strips. So here's the difference in the thickness. You can see it's almost a half again as thick as the dimensionals. So it really makes a good, this is what we use when we do shaker cards. And it gives that nice area in there to put lots of shaky stuff in. So we'll use those today to pop our panel up. So first of all, I just wanted to um, do a little bit. And I, I can't see my comments today. So I just want to do um, show you a little bit of the new celebration release, stamping up. Uh, this is the first release, so it has all the the stuff that we've been using for the past couple of months in it. This one is the second release. Now it looks very familiar to the first one, but this one says more free products. So in here, there's the flowering foil specialty paper and this well-dressed um, stamp set. Masculine stamp set. Isn't that adorable? Are masculine sets adorable? I'm not sure. I don't know why I can't see my comments today. That's just bizarrely weird. So I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to I'll try to bring them up on my computer. There we are. Okay, so and then there's the so very vellum specialty paper and it's already embossed. Tags and Bloom stamp set. This one is free with $120 order. All the rest of them are free with 60 And then at the back they've got 
the carryover stuff from the last release and I did skip right over the Rise and Shine stamp set. Now this one works with the Cup of Cheers dies that were in the holiday catalog and are now available. They call them unpublished, but you can find them online just by searching for Cup of Cheers dies. So this starts for customers on uh, March the 3rd. You'll be able to get this stuff. I made up a couple of sampler sheets for the papers and I just want to see if it's in frame here yeah okay so this is the so very vellum specialty designer paper it's pool party purple posy and soft sea foam and it's vellum and the vellum's got a like a pearlized shine to it it's really pretty and you it's really nice if you're tactile like I am, touching it is a lot of fun. And then there's the flowering foil specialty designer paper. It's rose gold foil, silver foil, and whisper white. Whisper white. So you can see on these flowers, they're rose gold, and then the silver foil is around. Look at this one. Look at this one. Now, people have been coloring these with their blends. I just got mine yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to um, use it yet, but I will. And it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. You can brayer it, you can sponge it, you can use the Stampin' Blends on it. Um, you can use the Stampin' Write markers on it. Or you can just leave it plain. Yeah, so look at the shine on that. Okay, so I also made up a sampler sheet for the Pleased as Punch Designer Series paper that's available in the Coordination product release. Now I have these um, sheets if you would like them as a template. I find them really handy because at the bottom it tells you the colors that it goes with. So when I want to use um, any of the designer papers, I just I go and pull out my sheet like this and it tells me where to start, what colors I can use to go with it. Now this one, this designer paper, um, coordinates with the tulip punch, the small blossom punch, the heart heart like heart duo pack, and the um, umbrella builder punch. But the reverse are really cool too. So those are the, if you want the the templates, just pop me an email at djmollet at shaw.ca or message me on Facebook and I'm happy to email them to you. I have only got the the starting in 1st of Jan, yeah the 1st of January, the um, Occasions Mini Catalog and Celebration. I haven't done the, the um, annual catalog yet but if somebody wants that let me know and I will see what I can do okay this is bothering me that I can't see who's watching hi Val so I'm just going to lower my camera a bit so I can I can see I'll just get it lined up again so you can there that's better Good morning. I can see now. Nice. Okay. So I also have a class this afternoon and we're going to be making three cards. This one uses the Grace's Garden bundle. This one uses the Mountain Air bundle. And I case this one right out of the catalog. This one is a GMO, which stands for Glenda Mollet Original. This one is out of the catalog and it really shows off how to use that mountain air bundle because it's a double-sided stamp set and we're also going to make the, this cute ladybug card doesn't it just make your heart happy to look at these things i love this just let me show you the mountain air stamp set so this is the stamp set and it's double-sided which means you can turn it over and stamp with the opposite side 
it doesn't line up completely so if you're OCD you kind of have to let that go a bit and um, not be so OCD and it's really hard for me but I did it so if you can see these mountains here the first layer of mountains I've stamped them first in um, pretty peacock and after stamp and then I stamped it off and then I did um, second generation ink and then over top I took the detail part of the stamp so that's this is the back side that I used and this is the detailed part and did it full strength with Pe pretty peacock so you get really good detail and then if you look really closely though it doesn't line up properly so you have to let that go things just need to be let go sometimes this is another sample I did with for the mountain air and I used the shimmery white embossing powder to put snow on the mountains. It's really cool but I think there should have been snow on all of the mountains because well the blotches kind of look like there's snow. Anyways moving on enough diddle daddling. Hi Carla! I love it too. Okay so last week I said Anybody who sent me a message requesting a card kit from last week's um, Facebook Live that I would mail it out to them. So thank you to those that did that and your card kits are on the way. I also have a giveaway. Anybody who placed an online order or through me by Sunday, February the 9th, your name went into a draw and I drew for this Thoughtful Bloom stamp set. I'm happy to say that Penny, Penny R, one of my local club members, is the winner of this. Hi, Kathy. So I will get this to Penny. Congratulations, Penny. Oops, better put my note back on it so I remember who it's going to. There we go. Okay, well, I think that's it. I'll show you what we're using today. So we're using the Painted Poppy stamp set, the coordinating... Um, painted labels dies and I've already got a, most of them out and then we're using a peaceful moment stamp set for the happy birthday I like this stamp set because it's got some really nice sentiments in it and the birthday dies these are in the coordination product release so we're using this die that cuts these really cute leaf images out and then the background of the card is the subtle embossing folder so we'll be using that too all right so let's get this over here ready to go there's my current host code if you'd like to order anything and I'm just getting my big shot ready I did remember to bring it this time well the first thing we're going to do is put put the um, subtle embossing folder on that piece of whisper white now this is thick whisper white I prefer that when I'm popping up the entire panel because then there's no no caving in this middle so here's the recipe for this card um, I will run the thick whisper white panel through the subtle embossing folder while you're looking at the, the recipe. I promise I'll keep my hands out of the way so you guys can see it without. All right, without having my big hand in the middle. So this is one of the new emboss or the old style embossing folders. But if you order it now you will get it in the new style so they're really confusing and I left my my uh, mat down at the other end of the house as usual but I'll show you a picture so okay so the old ones the old embossing folders prior to June 2019 had this word Sizzix on them as well as the word Stampin' Up. So if you have those, it's the old style and you use the platform embossing folder, a shim if you have to, and then just a clear plate on top. If you have one of the new ones, let me just get, 
So this is these were called dynamic. The new ones are called 3D. They're not they're made by stamping up. Sizzix is not involved and they're not quite as thick as the old style. So there's a a comparison for you. This one needs the blue embossing folder plate, which is this piece of equipment. It's a little bit thicker than um, the cutting plates, the clear cutting, cutting plates. So it makes up for the difference in the thickness of the embossing folders. So this, if you're looking to purchase one of these, it's item number 149658 and it's 1350 for the plate. All right, so I got the embossing done. Oh, you know what? Bad me. I was supposed to stamp that first. So I'm just gonna grab another one. I have four kits left from yesterday's card making with the seniors, and I'm happy to give those away to anybody who slips me an email at gjmollet.shaw.ca or um, sends me a message, Facebook message. I will mail those four off this week. Okay, so there's two blotches in there and there's no real, real guide of where to put them. It's just wherever looks good for you and you want it to be poking out so quite close to the top and the bottom like that. Get that out of the way, close that up get my embossing folder back. This one probably wouldn't matter because the subtle embossing folder is subtle. But we might as well do it right. So if you're watching and wondering how to do this card, you won't have to second guess what I'm doing. So I'm just running it through the big shot again. My die cutting machine. And isn't it awesome? that stamping up sometime after June the 2nd is coming out with their new emboss or die cutting machine. I can't wait. My, my big shots are well loved. Well loved. Okay, so this is the inside piece. And we have a, and the card base. So I'm just gonna put those to the side. This is done, now I need to cut the pieces to build on that. So the black one, we're going to cut out this, this die, this little scallopy doody die, and we're going to cut out these from the birthday dies to, to layer on there. So just whip that through. And remember, when you're using your big shot, you don't want to go too fast. You kind of want to give it time to cut and manipulate the cardstock. And usually I go back and forth twice with my die cuts. Now when you're embossing, of course, you don't do that. You only ever run your embossing through once because um, if you run it through more than once, if it's not completely lined up, when you send it through with the non-hinge side first, you could actually pop your embossing folder. There we are. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is, I call this the hinge end. And when you're using it in your machine, you always send that in through first, because if you put it in on the side that opens, if it, for some odd reason, it doesn't get itself lined up and you've got the top is not quite as long meeting over here on the bottom. By the time you get to this, they're offset like this. And by pushing it through, you can actually pop this top um, hinge. There's a way to fix it. All you have to do is get some packing tape because it works really well. All right, I'm going to just pop this out of the die. I do like how our new dies release the paper really fast. There's no 
fiddling with them like there used to be. And I think by going slower and giving the cardstock time to manipulate, that makes a difference too. Okay, so we have two pieces left. One we're going to stamp, <coughs> pardon me, one we're going to stamp the happy birthday. And I want it over to the right hand side of the die cut. And the other one we're going to stamp one of each of the flowers. And remember, this is memento, so you kind of want to do a, a tap and swerp, swoop, swerp, twist. And one of the little ones. Like that. And while I have the ink out, I'm going to do the inside and the envelope. And I'm going to use this image for that. And remember, your card is a hamburger. Oops, I need my scrap paper. I don't want to, don't want to stamp on my grid paper. So there's that and the envelope. There we go. Put those to the side. Put this away. Cover up my ink pad. All right. So let's get the flowers that we need to color. So I'm using Lovely Lipstick, the light and the dark. And you can go light to dark or you can go dark to light. It's your preference. I like to go light to dark because that's how I get the effect that I like. And there's two ends to the Stampin' Blends. There's a brush tip and a bullet tip. And I like the bullet tip. But again, it's a preference. It's a personal preference of which one you want. And you can tell before you even open it which is which because there's a thicker stripe here for the brush tip and a thinner stripe for the um, bullet tip. Okay, so when you're, when you're coloring, you don't want to do the whole flower at one time because you need to have the ink wet. So you fill it in in a circular motion like this, and that allows the ink to settle into your cardstock. And I'm just doing this. Oh, look, I'm actually not rushing this morning. I have to be in the mood to color. If I'm not in the mood, strange things happen. Okay, so you need to get lots of ink. So then you check your back. And if you have it going through like that, you've got enough ink. So this is the dark one. And you want to go um, sort of where there's going to be shadows. So underneath this little tipped over leaf there and down along here because this leaf is sitting over top of it. And then you can go a little bit in the around the center. And then I go back to the light one again and blend the dark into the light just so you don't have... See there's that division there can you see the definition of the dark and the light? Where up here, where I've blended it, it's um, softened a bit. And you don't get those. Oh, I was going to leave highlights on this and I never did. Oh, well. So that's how you do it. So let's, I'm going, this one I'll do highlights so you can see. So you do the same thing, you go around. Go in a circular motion around your flower and then let's just leave a highlight section there. Make sure you've got lots of ink. Take your dark. This petal overlaps that one so there's dark there and it doesn't, oh, this petal is overlapping that one so I'm not going to put the shadow there and then you just go back 
over top where you put the black one to soften those edges a bit. And now I'm just going to, I'm not pushing at all. I'm just going over top very lightly. And see it leaves a lighter area there. Let me pick it up so you can see. Can you see the lighter area there? Okay, let's just carry on and get these flowers colored. I'm going to be a daredevil and go rogue and do two of them. And we'll get the dark one. And remember where you're... Oh, and then I didn't do the highlight. Oh. Good Lord. Oh, well. I just won't go over top of the... I won't go over top of it all with the lighter color. I'll just leave it one layer there in the center. And then you can watch those petals that you've already done. And if you don't like how it's blending, just Take the time to go back and add some more color and it will blend. So this one doesn't have any shadows so I'm just going to put a shadow right down here at the bottom. And this one there's a little bit of a shadow there and then there's a shadow along here and we'll just do a couple right there. All you're doing is adding accents. And go back over it with the light one again. And fill the center in. And then go back over and blend in your, your dark. Now I'm going to very lightly go over top of that. Just so it has a little bit of um, definition. Now you can, just let me get it. You can go back in, this is a color lifter. And you can go back in and just kind of make it a little bit lighter where you want the highlights. And see how it brings out the light areas there. So and then put and then put the the color lifter away and let it do its job because it doesn't do it all at once. You kind of have to let it work a bit. So this one, I'll try to make sure I leave highlights in it. And I'm going to do a couple of petals. It just, it goes faster. But when you're at home doing this, make sure you um, don't do too many because you don't want your ink to start to dry. And now is when I have to keep telling myself, highlight, 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 highlight. All right, back with the dark. And we're going to put highlight there and there and around the center. And then down underneath that petal, this one along here. And then go back in with your the light again and soften those edges and blend it all together. And then I'm going to go over top. but still avoid that one spot that I've left the white highlight in there just so you can see the difference. So are you, do you guys like coloring? I used to love it when I was a kid. I think that's why I like it so much now. Oh, hi, Karen. 
I like that I can actually read the comments and see who's watching with me. So when I was a kid, we had a cabin on Okanagan Lake in the interior of BC where I live and um, there was no power. We had Coleman lamps and a propane fridge and a wood stove and we had so much fun out there. But on rainy days we used to have to find something to do and then there was that time after dinner, you know, back in the good old days, it was all, we were always told that you have to wait an hour to go swimming once you've had a meal. So we used to do a lot of stuff with the neighboring kids. We would go for walks. There was a creek and we used to walk up the creek. I don't know why we did, we just did. And then we'd end up on the highway and then have to walk back past all these farmer fields. Anyways, um, sometimes we decided to color and we didn't really have coloring books out there because we weren't planning on coloring. We spent all day every day in the water. So we used to take paper napkins and draw around the the embossed images on the paper napkin. And then if we were lucky and had crayons with us, we would color them in too. I don't remember ever finishing one, but that's okay because we only had an hour to wait. And then this, if it was raining, well, we would just go swimming anyways. There we are. So there's the, the two different ways of creating highlights putting the lids back on my markers here. So this one, you can see where the, the color lifter has worked. And if you want it lighter, you just go back with the color lifter and go over top of it again, like this. And it'll bring the, the highlights out. Okay, now. Let's go and put that to the side. We'll color the the envelope in the inside. Now I'm not going to try and blend with these. Um, the envelope, if you do, the ink tends to go right through to the outside of the back side of the envelope. So I try not to use too much ink. Or you can use your stamp and write markers. They would work too. I just don't have mine right here. So just a little light coating for your envelope because you can see it's already come through the first layer. Now you can put a piece of scrap paper inside there and eliminate that issue. But if you don't put too much ink on, it doesn't go through. As we're not blending, so I don't need all that ink coverage. I'm just making it pretty. There we are. Now, my light mossy meadow out. You have to go really light with this because these markers are made to go in to the cardstock and flow. So you have to be very gentle with the the tip if you don't want it to really expand out past your stamped image, but if you don't mind that, then have at her. There we are, all done. And I'm not going to color the envelope on screen. You, you understand the envelope. I can do that afterwards. Okay, so that's done. Now we need to die cut these. I'll get my magnetic platform out. Yeah, when you have a, a well-loved uh, clear cutting plate for your die cutting machine and you need to get little bits off, don't do this because you can actually get slivers of that 
Lexan up your fingernails. It's not a good thing. Boot. Okay, and this goes on here like this, and I just use a bit of washi tape just so when I get it lined up, it won't move because they're they're hard enough to line up. You don't want to line them up twice. There we are. Oops, that needs to go in a tad. And then now that I have it on there with washi tape, I can move it around. And this one, we're going to cut that out. And then there's a piece of vellum that I did not have in that kit, but I have right here. I'll cut the vellum out too. So it has a vellum uh, label in behind there. So that's what we're going to cut out with this die. Oops. Yeah, sometimes that's annoying. But then don't try to fight with it. If your die moves, just move your paper to where the die wants to go. Let it have its way. Because you're not going to win. It's one of those things where you have to choose your battles. All right. Well, now I'll put that through the die cutting machine. Going slow to give the paper time to be manipulated. Okay, you need that piece and not this. You could use this on a card too. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Hmm. Not saving it. If I saved all the little bits and pieces I wanted to save, I would not be able to get into my craft room. So you just have to, when you're removing these with the washi tape, you just have to be a little bit more patient to get them to release. Okay, die cuts out of the way as we're done. Okay, step one is to attach that filigree thing to the back of your sentiment piece. And I'm just going to do that with a little bit of Tombow that seems to be really running today for some reason. So I think I'll just let this dry because there's an awful lot of Tombow on there. Let me get a, a scrap paper and just take some of that off because I don't need that much glue. there so I'm just gonna put that to the side and let that dry and then this glue that I took off I'll just put it on the back of the the leaves and let it dry a bit my voice sound as gravelly as I think it sounds maybe I need to have a drink or something yeah so there we go we'll let those dry and I'll just take a quick drink I uh, I know Valerie you would save it you would Oh nice swimming is super fun I love I love swimming I don't care where I swim well I do I don't swim in our local ocean because it's just too cold way too cold All right so this is that vellum that I cut and I'm going to put some adhesive right in the very middle. Vellum will show adhesive, but if you'd put it in the middle where you're putting something over top of it, then it doesn't matter. So this piece goes down flat if I can ever get the liner off. All right, so our, our local son and his family got puppies the other day yes they got two two labradoodle puppies that are adorable so grandma went over and had some puppy time yesterday it was so fun 
Now that I think I'll slide in after I get it on. Yeah, they, they're, what are they, about eight weeks old, I think. We had so much fun playing. Now this, um, you can leave it all the way across or you can cut it off. If you leave it all the way across, you just have to lower that poppy a bit so that it covers the edge. I'm just going to do this. No, I'm going to do it this way because it cuts better. Come on, move over a bit. There. I'm just going to take my scissors and cut that off. Like that. There we go. So you can't see, but underneath here, I left this one whole, and it's just covered up by the, the poppy. Okay, now this is on dimensionals. So we'll just pop that up. And there's a big area in the middle, so I'm going to put one in the middle. Now, I'm going to go back and move this one because this is this is where those black leaves are going to be. So I'm just going to move it over a bit so there's a bit of area to be able to slip the leaves underneath once I get everything else on there. They may not reach that far, but I don't want to take the chance. Now this, you want it right over to the right. Kind of like that, except a little bit straighter. There we go. Now there's flags here, and I don't like this. Let's get rid of those. Okay, so we're just about there. Now we're going to put the big flower goes on top like that, and then the little flower just sits there like that and then the the leaves pop in and these are not um, up on dimensionals these are flat but I'm only putting adhesive where it overlaps the label put some adhesive there and I got it a bit too long so I'm just going to fold this back so it doesn't stick to the vellum like that okay so where should we put this? Right, right there is good. Now, I did put a dimensional back there and I forgot to do it on this one. So we're just gonna slip one underneath there. And if you put it onto your paper piercing tool, also known as a pokey tool, and take the liner off the other side, you can get it under there, just like that. See, it's not hard. Okay, now we're going to put a little bit of adhesive, some tear and tape, right at the bottom of this doodad. Because this is going to sit right about there. And then I'll put a, put a dimensional up here. Now, this probably works really well for get rid of that liner too. Look at that. Nice. Okay. Favorite new tool. There we are. Now these, remember I put glue on them already, so I just have to slide them under. And you can cut that extra um, stem off if you want. It depends on how much room you've got underneath there to slide things in. Oops, it's stuck. Oops. I'm holding the poppy up and it's still sticking. There we are. Now I don't stick these down because I like the dimension that they give the card, but if you want to stick them down, go ahead. All right, where'd I do my strips? All right, well, we're going to put the foam strips all the way around. And don't go too close to the edge because you don't want it to be too visible.
No, well, I'm doing that. I'm just looking to see if <laughs> normal as I can. Valerie, on my planet, I'm perfectly normal. Gilly's Bay. Isn't that um, Texader, right? Oh, and then you said on Texada Island. Yeah, I didn't read that far because I only glanced. All right. Get the card base. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky, but I'm going to try this, the rabbit ear thing with these and see if it makes it any easier to put it on. Because once these things are down, they're down. All right. Get it the right way up. See if I can get it lined up on there. Oh, how easy was that? So you don't only have to use rabbit ears with tear and tape. Look at that. You can use them with the foam strips too. Oops. Yep, you can, you still lose it, even with the foam tape, the foam strips, I still lose the liner. Come on. It's not quite as easy to get the liner off of this, though. There we are. Now, bling time. First step, Wink of Stella, and I'm going to do the flower centers, because you know, there's never too much bling on a card, and I'm kind of dotting it, I'm not making it solid, just because that's the way I want it to be today. So I recently did some coloring with... Um, Rubbing alcohol in an aqua pen. Now that's fun. We'll do one on Facebook Live at some point. Okay, rhinestones. Where did I put the rhinestones? There you go. Let's just get some of this mess out of the way so it's not too hard for you guys to see. Rhinestones. And I'm using just the plain rhinestones, none of, not any of the colored ones. But you can color the, if you want um, lovely lipstick ones to match your lovely lipstick card, you can do that. There we are. Now, let's put the inside in. Just put that to the side for a sec while I get the tear and tape on. Yeah, the puppies, the puppies. One's name is Coco and one is Rosie. They're both female. And right now they're they're trying to identify who's alpha female. So there's a lot of puppy fighting happening when they're out running around. It was so cute. And Coco is looks more lab where Rosie takes after the the father. Not in the coloring, because they're both colored like a golden lab. They got a little bit longer hair than a lab. You got these fluffy things happening. But Coco's face is more f flatter and rounder, the muzzle, than um, Rosie's, because the father is a standard poodle. And Rosie has the poodle face, the long, thin snout. Um, and Rosie is a bit smaller than Coco is. Coco's going to be a service dog for our grandson. There we are. So that didn't take too long. I love this card. And you can do it any color you want. So there's Lovely Lipstick and there's Poppy Parade. And 
the Wayne Costello hasn't completely dried yet, so it's it's really prevalent. But there you can see the centers and the bling. Well, people, my peeps, what do you think? Do you think it's okay? I had a lot of fun making this card. And I know my ladies did yesterday too. And I took all of my Stampin' Blends and they they were ever able to do whatever color they wanted. We had a whole field full of poppies yesterday. Thank you very much for joining me today. Now I'm thinking about reactivating my blog. So you might go to glendamollett.blogspot.com. Let me put these to the side. Find a scrap paper and I'll write it out because things may start to happen over there soon. Glenda Mollett dot blog spot dot com. So this is my blog and I'm going to be reactivating it. I think so. I'd like to start doing it again. It's been a couple of years and I think it's time. I agree with you, Valerie. They are both really pretty. Okay, so I hope you have a wonderful day. It's currently overcast and it was pouring rain this morning when I woke up, but the rain stopped. But I get to stamp in my, cra in my studio with some lovely ladies this afternoon and make some cards. So if you have any questions for me, there's my email address or just send me a Facebook message. I'm happy to help. And Valerie, we'll see you on the 23rd. I'm going over to Powell River to do a class with the Powell River peeps. Thanks for joining me this morning. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stampin' smiles and bye for now.